Ouais, ils vont. Hein? Mais là, ils Mais là, ils vont. Ils vont. Personne. Oh my god. I mean, absolutely. Do I not tell you that enough? This video is brought to you by Mubi, a curated streaming service showing exceptional films from around the globe. Get a whole month free at mubi.com slash skip intro. Today, we're talking about... More than that, though, I want to talk about men, bros, guys, dudes, and the masculine urge to solve problems through violence. That's... Toxic masculinity. If there's one thing that's dominated the HBO era of TV the last two decades, it's seeing men doing bad things, often violently, and then wondering if they're truly evil people or just men stuck in impossible predicaments. You know, dudes being guys. It's The Sopranos, it's Breaking Bad, it's Mad Men, it's The Shield, it's Dexter, and on and on and on. These shows were about anti-heroes or villain protagonists, but more than that, they were about masculinity. They were about taking charge, swallowing emotions, and dominating those around them. And while Barry is a show about a man who sounds like he should fit that bill, he's an ex-marine and professional stone-cold killer, Barry's job as a hitman is less exhilarating, more soul-sucking corporate gig. Like, I know there's more to me than that. When the second season of Barry ended way back in 2019, God, time is a freaking acid trip. I had this whole video idea about how Barry fit into that lineage of difficult men. It was going to be called Barry Breaks Bad. But then when I sat down to rewatch the show, because you know, it was three years ago and I'd forgotten everything, the thing that kept standing out to me was the way the show poked holes not just in the conventions of that genre, but in the deeper ideas about masculinity that these shows depict. While there are certainly some fantastic jokes built on the combination of violence and emasculation. You got good guys right here, man. Oh my god, my guys suck balls, you know it. Especially this motherfucker right here. If I suck balls, you are king of suck balls, Mountain. Shut the f up. Ah! It's gonna be a party. It's not really a party time. There's a good chance we'll die. F yeah. I don't think that the show is doing this just for laughs. The more I thought about it, the more I realized that every way the show undercuts its own violence, masculinity, and the stories we tell ourselves to justify them is a statement a critique, and a challenge to its audience. Interesting. The story's nonsense, but there's something to work with. So, what does Barry have to say? Since seasons one and two ended three years ago, I'm going to touch on them in a good amount of depth, so spoiler alert for them, but I'll steer clear of anything from season three, which just premiered. Okay, let's start by identifying a bunch of specific ways that Barry subverts our expectations about violent masculine characters. Where many characters in this genre feel trapped by society and find crime and violence as a way to break free, think Walter White, or live more authentic lives, think Dexter Morgan, Barry's life of crime isn't an escape. It's his prison. Think about how Dexter's serial killing of serial killers is an outlet for him, a way to embrace his more psychopathic tendencies in a healthy way? Or how Walter White's first act of rebellion against feeling emasculated is to beat up a teenager who was bullying his son. What are you doing? What's wrong, Chief? Having a little trouble walking? I know that kid kind of had it coming, but watching that scene back, it's kind of wild that people ever thought Walt was a good dude. Another good one to point to is Fight Club where Edward Norton's character feels trapped in his corporate job and finds violence as a way to break free. You see, violence in these stories is often linked with freedom or strength for its central men. And while Barry is at the same lonely starting point emotionally as these characters, directionless and purposeless, his job is violence. He's already there. The hitman world is really kind of an obligation to him. Yeah, it's, it's more of an just obligation. Sort of like, yeah. There are an enormous number of actors who work day jobs, and Barry just happens to be a hitman. And Barry's dreams are not the typically masculine idea of breaking free from his domestic shackles. He doesn't want to become a macho kingpin dominating all others in his path. He wants a domestic experience, a loving family, and to go grocery shopping. I hate grocery shopping, so this made the character completely unrelatable to me. Barry is less Don Draper, and more Matt Damon's character in 30 Rock. I want grown-up love. <laughs> in other words, Barry rejects this traditionally masculine role. He finds a purpose when he tries acting, a place where he can channel his emotions and through that find a sense of community and family. Now wait, Jackson, you might be thinking. 
Didn't The Sopranos start with Tony going to therapy? Isn't him being in therapy like a huge part of the show? Why yes. Why yes it is. But Tony rarely ever actually got in touch with his emotions. The Sopranos is defined by characters always walking right up to epiphanies about themselves and then sprinting in the other direction. As the legendary TV critic Emily Nussbaum put it in her piece The Long Con back in 2007, quote, each season Tony knew himself better. He gained more sophisticated tools to cope with life, but he became a better mobster, not a better man. And on Barry, acting could theoretically make him a better hitman. You know, if he was any good at it. Instead, it helps him process the violence and get to a point where he wants to leave this life behind. It's not what you'd expect a man to do in this genre. Those characters often close off their feelings to do bigger and badder violence, losing the families they're trying to protect in the meantime. This kind of inversion of masculine expectations exists all over Barry's character arc. When he decides to try to impress his acting classmate Sally, he tries to emulate a guy who knows exactly what he wants and isn't afraid to go after it. Looks like Bieber's macking on your chick, dude. Yeah. He flashes money and style while trying to shoo other men away from her, but it backfires pretty spectacularly. I just feel like you've got some toxic masculinity issues you need to work out, and until then we just shouldn't interact so much, or like, at all. In fact, the only person he ends up getting the attention of is the most macho man in the room, a man who watches porn recreationally. The goodest chick does this dude's asshole. I guess he's just a fan of the art form. It's not just Barry himself who subverts expectations about his stereotypically masculine role, though. The head of the Chechen crime mob, Goran, is a pretty traditional gangster. He wouldn't look out of place on The Sopranos with that burly physique and gruff attitude. But nearly every time Goran appears on screen, the setting sits in stark contrast to that character type. It's torturing people with his garage filled with pink girly toys, talking about raiding a stash house at a gymnastics practice for his daughter, or ordering a hit while a bunch of young girls are watching Disney Channel in the other room. It's a far cry from Tony Soprano's strip club base of operations. My daughter is having sleepover and we are being too loud. <laughs> Even more noticeable is Noho Hank, my alopecia icon, and the polite and effeminate lieutenant of the Chechen mob. I'm nice. I'm polite. I'm optometrist by nature. Hank has an amazing fashion sense, clearly putting time and effort into his appearance, and is focused not so much on the violent aspects of the gang's operations and domination, but on the aesthetics of it, the presentation. <laughs> He obsesses over what table to buy to put the heroin on. I've seen coffee tables, but not sure how to look for the table that I need. No, it's for heroin. Reads self-help books. We are more powerful together. God, so true. And of course, insists on delivering a bullet via DHL for theatrical effect. See, this way, we send a message to the Bolivians. Get inside their heads. They open mail. Bullet. What? Phone rings. Hello? Paco's dead. What? Little what leads to big what for full effect. When the Chechens bring in the veteran hitman Stovka to replace Barry in season one, Goran and Hank fangirl over how tough and manly he is. When I was a kid, I saw him once walking out the discotheque. He flicks cigarette at Bird, knocked it out of sky. But when he arrives, it's immediately apparent that his life of violent masculinity has been terrible for his mental health, his family, and his skin. How, how old a guy are you, Stovka? 45. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I had a wife, a child, but to leave me, she say I'm broken. Yeah, I caught about half of that stove. If you could take my cell phone out of my, my pocket here, I could show you one gal. She's Cherokee. She's really wild. I mean, I mean this is a dude clearly suffering under the weight of patriarchal gendered expectations, if I do say so myself. When Cristobal, the leader of the Bolivian crime gang, joins the story, he and Hank are incredibly similar, and even enter into an implied romantic relationship with each other. Look, I love you, okay? Can we just say that once and for all? Look, I love you, man. <laughs> Okay, so what's the point of all of these masculinity observations? So we're touching on a thing, but we're not commenting on it. They're funny subversions, but 
this humor I think has a deeper purpose. Whether it was The Sopranos, Breaking Bad, Mad Men, take your pick in the genre, there was a large contingent of the audience that idolized the most toxic traits of these characters as being real men. I mean, I found this GQ article where someone asked the writer where all the real men like Don Draper had gone. And the entire article is just the writer trying to explain that, no, Don Draper is is not Bay. But on Barry, it's hard to misinterpret the fragile masculinity of its characters. Humor deflates any sense of coolness or badassery in the show's violence. Oh my god, that was so scary. That was really scary. <sighs> I think Barry is trying to use its humor to separate violence from an essential manliness that we often see in these shows. To see what I'm talking about, take this scene from the end of the first episode of The Shield, a show about crooked cops. My name is I mean, that's a lot of testosterone. They're playing Kid Rock, they're walking in slow motion, there's, there's even a baseball game in the background. These are dudes being guys. Guys being dudes, they are real men. I've made two videos about The Shield, and this is a story that makes it pretty clear that these characters are villains, but the way that this is shot, the masculinity of it all, can often throw male audiences. Yeah, they're bad, but they're also kinda badass. That's not to take anything away from the intense action scenes in Barry, but I mean, the two most formidable enemies Barry faces over the course of the show are the female Detective Moss and a little girl. I thought you were a dog. I mean, she's like a demon, but she's also a little girl. I should also mention that each season has featured a hit where Barry is hired by a man to kill the person their wife is having sex with. And if that's not a commentary on emasculation, I, I don't know what is. Masculinity in our culture is often defined by purity tests. You cry once, and that pokes a hole in your entire manhood. You wear a pink bandana, and it takes away from your mustache, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> And I think that in some ways, Barry is using those purity tests to try to separate violence from an inherent stoic masculinity. All right, listen up, you clowns. I'm just kidding. You guys look great. While acknowledging that this is something that's socially conditioned in our men. You don't have to be a violent monster to be a man, but it does seem that men are often encouraged to be violent by our society. I'm sorry, I, just, I don't okay, know why I everybody know. wants me to do this, okay? I don't want to hurt anybody. In the second season, Barry recounts the first time he ever killed someone in war to his acting class. He leaves out some key details to them, but we see the whole story. That Barry was praised by his fellow soldiers and found a real sense of belonging through that act of violence. From 700 yards! Jesus oh my God. God. What are you Barry. doing? I was gonna take the bib off, but forget it! <laughs> Barry Burman! Barry 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 and that relationship between acceptance and violence is exactly what's used by his boss Fuchs in order to manipulate him and throw him into this life of contract killing. But one of the great magic tricks that Barry pulls off as a show is that it slowly shifts the conversation. While the first season is focused on the question of whether Barry can escape this life, the second season asks a different question. You see, Barry isn't a good guy forced to do bad things. He kills for selfish purposes, and he has a deep rage underneath that meek exterior that is genuinely terrifying in the moments where it peeks out. Why did you Facebook me, dude? You're a hitman, and then you fucking Facebooked me. Why'd you just say that? Barry is certainly a violent and evil man. Oh my god. Are we really debating the morality of murder? I mean, that's what the play is about. Macbeth is a murderer. Yeah, well, then I guess so am I, right? I mean, I've killed people. Wait, I, I should just go blow my brains out because there's no hope for me. I think that Barry is relating to his experience in the military, which is completely justifiable. And I want to say on behalf of the rest of the class, boy, I'll tell you, thank you for your service. Really. Thank you, Barry. But I think that you will all agree with me that uh, if you kill outside of war, you're a fucking psycho. But it's something that has been encouraged out of him. It's the only utility anyone has ever seen in him, and it's the only thing that has ever brought him a sense of belonging or purpose. 
Acting, and particularly Barry's new father figure, Gene, provide Barry with a healthier outlet, emotional language for him to process his anger, depression, and violence in a setting where no one is hurt. Barry's best acting comes when he faces what he's done and processes those emotions. I just saw you go to a place tonight I have never seen before. I don't know if you can do it again, but it was a mess. <laughs> okay. I see you're still in that place. The show's very premise, the way it twists violence into monotony, is one that we could easily view as one that comments on the state of this genre. Audiences have been inundated with ever more violent and vile men. Like, we get it. It's, it's enough slices. These shows might not have been about this idea originally, but the kind of discourse around them has made it clear that we often want to find ways to use or justify a kind of inherent male violence. And uh, these people I take out, like they're, they're bad people, you know, like they're pieces of shit. TV is an empathetic medium. We want to like these characters. And if we accept the narrow and rigid definitions of masculinity presented to characters in this genre of show, we have historically come up with reasons to forgive and forget. Maybe there's an even bigger evil that he's fighting. Maybe he's providing for his family. Or maybe he's just such a wounded and flawed man. Well, I guess everyone's a hero of their own story, right? I think that in a lot of ways, the second season of Barry is where the show took a leap. It got weirder in the best ways. It moved past the conventional question of, is Barry evil? He is. And it fleshed out its cast a lot more fully. But it also carved out its own space in the genre. Sally is in many ways an avatar for the show's commentary on itself and these types of shows. She is the only main female character in a genre where the primary love interest is often derided. So many other women have the same story. What, am I a spokesperson for them now? Could I be the face of the movement? I mean, what if I get it wrong? I mean, I resent the fact that Nick can get up there and talk about his stomach condition and it's not like he has to be the poster boy for bulimia, but I get up there and whatever I say, it's like, what are we saying about women? There were large swaths of fans that actively hated Carmela Soprano and Skylar White, female characters that they saw getting in the way of their men being men. But for Sally, her gender is frequently highlighted and held up as the inverse to Barry's unconventional masculinity. She's defined by her career focus and ambition, stereotypically masculine traits, but she's constantly running into her own rigid gender roles. You became the character of, what was her name? Uh, oh, the script just said wife. Well, you elevated it. She's sexually harassed by sleazy acting agents, and she's typecast into demeaning and condescending female roles. There's three women. When we meet them, they're all in abusive relationships. They're lost. But then over the course of the pilot, they meet each other, they realize how much they have in common, and they start to lean on each other. That's great, yeah, I love that. So they start a group where they kill their husbands. Jesus. But that's the pilot. The series is them finding other women in similar tough spots and helping them get revenge. Importantly, in the second season, Sally explains how she is a victim of a violent man, her ex-husband. Sally describes the story of her leaving that marriage at first as a moment of defiance. You want to choke me? We'll choke on this. We're done. You got it? But we later learn that this is a lie, that Sally stayed with him for years while he beat her and choked her, finally getting the courage to leave in the middle of the night when he was passed out drunk. Sally writes a powerful and raw scene about this, where she explains that truth. I take care of him, so my shame grows. I stay for the apology. But at the last moment, chickens out and reverts the performance to the fake story about her defiance, to universal acclaim. Turns out, people don't want the truth, they just want the truth they feel best about. And now we know why you hated Aaron Ryan's story so much. His story was dark and gritty and frankly kind of a bummer about women who get trapped in a hopeless existence. The truth was full of hope and redemption about a woman taking charge of her life, really inspiring. This is not unlike the story Barry tells himself about being able to change before going on a murderous rampage, even killing someone he once saw himself in without any hesitation. I think that in a lot of ways, these stories about difficult men are stories we tell ourselves about masculinity. That men are violent creatures who just need to be pointed at the right targets. And I think that Barry is playing with that idea. Are men violent by nature, or are they made violent through our expectations? You know how you and I talk all the time about my purpose? You think acting could be your purpose? Is masculinity a rigid one-size-fits-all box, or is gender a little more fluid? You know, you're very polite. 
This is nice. Yes, nice. It is nice. And why is our society built in a way that, in so many ways, excuses and allows violence from men? You know, they're gonna say, they're gonna say, you wear pissy pants. No. No, I know, you don't wear pissy pants. You wear big boy who takes down stash house pants. Barry is asking us to question what we think masculinity is and should be. Its blend of comedy and dark drama never allows its audience to totally settle, and it forces us to question what stories we tell ourselves about masculinity, and particularly the way violence factors in. And what is this talk about killing me? Come on, cool your jets, man. You sound like a psychopath. Of course, even though the characters on Barry are from all over the globe, Barry is talking about masculinity from an American perspective. But if you're interested in seeing these ideas played out in different cultures, I'd recommend the documentary Playing Men. It explores the idea of play amongst men across Europe, and in the process touches on masculinity and the way it presents itself in games and competition. It's a really interesting perspective, features the director going through a good old-fashioned existential crisis halfway through the film, and you can check it out on MUBI. Mubi is a curated streaming service where you can watch interesting and incredible cinema from around the globe. Yeah, that's right, it's so good that even the TV guy is endorsing it. One of the reasons I love TV is that even when an episode feels way different than the rest of the series, like Ronnie, Lily, and Barry, I always feel like I'm in good hands. And that's the same deal with Mubi. Each and every film is hand-selected. It's like having a film festival at your fingertips, you're always in good hands. You like having a new episode of Barry every week? How about a new film every day? You can try Mubi free for 30 days at mubi.com slash skip intro. That's M-U-B-I dot com slash skip intro for a whole month of great cinema for free. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, you can share, you can like, you can subscribe. You can also waltz on over to Patreon to support the channel there and get your name in the credits like these beautiful people scrolling across your screen. There you can get the inside scoop on bigger projects I'm working on, including the ever-hyped, finally scheduled video about copaganda in Paw Patrol. Yeah, those filthy mutts aren't gonna know what hit them. Thanks again, and I'll talk at you again soon.